Hey everyone and welcome to week two of our Hidden Potential online Bible study. I know we loved spending last week with you. My name is Kendra and I am the manager of online Bible studies and this is the author Wendy Pope who is going to be our friend at the end of these week yes, six videos. I so. And I think we could start calling you We Pope then. I think so. Okay. That's kind of an intimate name and by the end of six weeks we are going to be really close friends. I think so too. Yeah. So if mm -hmm. you want to start calling her We Pope. We Pope. Mm -hmm. W -E P O. Oh, All right, it's capital W E, capital right. P O. It's Thank like, you for clarifying yeah, we that. Po. There we go. All right. By the end of six weeks, we'll be doing that. <laughs> so we wanted to talk about something that's in the book that you're gonna experience for the first time in week two, mm -hmm. and that's something called a possibility profile. Right. And so, Wendy, yes. what is a possibility profile? Well, um, as an author, I. I well, here's the thing. I don't want the whole book to be about my life and my stories and what mm -hmm. God did for me. Um, because, you know, God does great things for me, but you know what? He works in other people's lives as well. Yes. And interestingly enough, as I began writing, even pre-writing, mm -hmm. um, thinking about the concepts of the book, the fears and the faults and the failures and the frailties, I was driving down the road one day and the Lord laid four people on my heart. Mm -hmm. And... Um, <laughs> I wrote their name on a sticky note. If you looked at my dash of my car, I have sticky notes everywhere. That's, Do you really? Yes. Is that's, anybody else a sticky note person? Let yeah. us know. We'd love to know. That's, I have to have a pen and sticky notes, and that's how I remember <laughs> things. Fun. And then when, I'm, when I get home, if there's something I've got to do in the house, I pull it off and I take it in, inside. I don't write it when I drive, so I'm safe driving. <laughs> um, but I remember writing these ladies' names down, and for six months, Kendra, I prayed for these ladies. Six months. Mm -hmm. Okay, I love the discipline. Yes, and the it time. was about six months. Okay, <laughs> all right. So I'm just yeah. Okay, so I remember praying for these ladies, and should am, am I hearing you right, right, Lord? Do you want them to share their stories? And one by one, I began calling them and asking them to share their stories, mm -hmm. and. Um, a I feel couple like that'd them. be an interesting phone call, Wendy, because you <laughs> ask them to, you're profiling yes. faults, fears, yes. failures, and then frailties. And so I don't uh -huh. know how you intro that. I'd be like, I'd love for you to talk about your failure. Oh, exactly. <laughs> and Sharon um, is next week. And that was the last call that I made. Okay. Fear. Okay. A lot of people deal with fear. True. And that's pretty common to talk about fears. Um, faults, not as much, but I had, that's like one of my really good friends. And she's one of those people that we have nicknames for, right? You know, we can, we'll know each other on right. an intimate level. Frailties is something that people in society accept a little bit more easily. Mm -hmm. So that was not quite so hard to talk about. But to call Sharon and say, hey, do you want to write about your failure in a book that's going to be read by lots of people? <laughs> right. Do you want to amplify to the world how you <laughs> failed? Yeah, so um, that was that was not an easy call to make, mm. but she was very great. They were all very gracious and shared their story. Yeah. Um, well, you know, some of their story because they still deal with the fears. They still deal with the faults and the failures and the frailties. Mm -hmm. God doesn't take those things away for the most part. Right. What he wants to do is show his glory through them. Right, use them. And so... They were just very generous enough to share that, and and Cook worked with them. David C. Cook worked with them to get their man, their part of the manuscript ready, and mm -hmm. share their vulnerabilities, wow. um, which a lot of people don't want to do. So I applaud them. Um, I think for it's a doing neat part. That. It's a really yeah. neat part of your book. Something. So new, it's not just different. all about me and and God. It's there are other people. Yeah, and they're they're unique, and and um, that there's some professional situations, mm -hmm. there are marital situations, there are personal situations. So there's there's it's flavored. There you go. The Ooh, variety flavored. the variety of you can their find stories. yourself in their stories. Absolutely. That's right. really neat. Uh -huh. And then something else we have for you if you're doing this study mm -hmm. is we actually have a conversation you have with each possibility profile person. Right. And it's an audio clip of just a just the conversation that you have right, with them. And I think 10 that's, minutes maybe. Yeah, and so you'll get that at the end of the week. It's something you can listen to mm -hmm. on your weekend, for your weekend. But I'm just very grateful that you gave us access to those so we can hear oh, the woman's voice. Absolutely. And I think that just adds some depth it to does. it too. It does. It really does. Yeah. It really does. And they're right. just normal, everyday women um, that we're willing to share. And that's how we grow, you know. Yeah. We, we aren't perfect. Yeah. We put on true. our perfect Sunday faces. Our filter, to, if you will. Our filter, yeah. right. <laughs> 
and um, yeah, the the memes and all the great things that we put on Facebook, but right. we all have hurts. Right. So I'm grateful mm -hmm. that you put those stories in your book and we get to listen to them too. Absolutely. You get to meet them. That's right. So part of these videos is really hearing from Wendy because she unpacks and talks about each one of the questions you'll see at at the beginning of the chapter. Right. And so for chapter two, the question is, am I still useful after I've failed? And I know for me, when mm. I fail, I don't necessarily want to talk about it. I don't necessarily no. want to revisit it. And mm -hmm. so, Wendy, are you still useful after you have failed? Well, remember we gave the answer You're last right. week like to all the questions. What was the, what was the answer to the question? The answer was yes. It's yes, <laughs> with the caveat of, are we going to allow God to work in our lives mm. through the failure? Yeah, because we have to let him, right? We do, and we have to revisit the failure. You just said, Yeah. you just kind of want to stuff it. You just kind of oh, want to yeah. move on. But here's what I've learned um, in, in life about failure is that failure is a tool. Mm. It is a tool, and... Um, we can use that tool for our good. I like the way allow, you frame that. We can allow God to use it yeah. um, and reshape us mm. and to teach us. We can use it as a teaching tool. It has value and it's it can be a detour to our faith, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have to completely derail our faith. Okay. And the enemy wants that to be so. Right. He, In fact, that's what he constantly reminds us of through our thoughts is that and not just our thoughts, constantly putting things in front of us. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, women who are living the story that you want to be living, mm -hmm. the dream that you want to be living, but life has, you have kind of allowed things to happen. Life right. has allowed things to happen, and it kind of derails us a little bit. We were reminded, oh, okay, well, I did do that. So, yeah, I did do that really bad thing. Right. Or that we didn't work it. out. And exactly. Then we, can't move. we can accept it and not move, but what we need to do is learn how to accept it and move. Yeah. Um, and not let it paralyze, or as I refer to in the book, fracturing our mm -hmm. faith. And that example of, of the fact that we can have bones, our bones can be fractured, but they can be repaired. Right. You set them in a, a sling or a cast, right. go to an orthopedist, and they fix that up, and they can fix it up as good as new. Our faith can be the same way. But failure is definitely one that will splinter and splinter and splinter and eventually leave us almost paralyzed, yeah. um, as does fear. And we'll talk more about that in another week. But, yeah, Sharon was the one who was that difficult call. Mm -hmm. um, and she shares her professional failure at the end of the book. And um, she would probably be first to admit that for a while she did allow it to derail her. Mm -hmm. But... Then, once she faced it, dealt with it, it's just been a detour. Yeah. Um, another thing that I want us to really grasp about failure is um, that failure is not always sin. That's good. Okay? Mm -hmm. But sin is always failure because when we sin, we're going against God's covenants, God's ways. Um, but failure is not always sin. And, you know, that's another lie that the enemy wants us mm. to believe yeah. that you know, that thing that you did that was so bad yeah. that you think was so bad most of the time really is it that bad <laughs> no but we can play it up in our Absolutely. minds right we can we overtake just, we us just, we just dress it up right and we just blow it up and we make it and then we compare it to what somebody else is doing like I said and it just begins to overtake us and then the enemy again will have us paralyzed mm -hmm. believing Okay, well, that was wrong. That was a sin. So what I want us to focus on today in our lesson is how do we distinguish mm. the difference between, okay, is this failure a sin or is it just a failure and, and what do I need to do with this? Okay, I'm excited for okay. this because I had that question. Exactly. So, so how do we know that? And it's if you've got if, if you've got your Bible, mm -hmm. I have mine. I have mine marked so we could get to it really Very quickly. <laughs> um, J uh, John chapter six, verse seven and eight, and uh, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen are probably in John are probably some of my favorite 
words of uh, of chapters in in the Bible. It's Jesus is talking to his disciples and Mm -hmm. he's letting them know he's going to be leaving them. And um, you can imagine how bewildered they were and what all did this mean and what is he saying? And he's telling them here in chapter 16, he says, starting verse 7, but I tell you the truth, it is for your good that I go. Don't you know they're thinking, really? How is this for our good? Right. Um, That I'm going away. Unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you. Mm -hmm. But if I go, I will send him to you. And in verse 8, when he comes... He will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness Mm -hmm. and judgment. So this is is where we need to start when we're trying to distinguish, was this sin a failure or is this just something that I did wrong and and I'm making a mountain out of a molehill. That's kind of a southern phrase. Yeah, I tend to do that. Yeah, (laughs) this little little, little molehill here, but I'm making a mountain Mm -hmm. out of it. I make it much worse than it is. We need to be willing to sit with God and allow him to investigate. Mm -hmm. Sit with the Holy Spirit and allow him to investigate um, the situation. Mm -hmm. What led up to what I failed, how I failed? Um, How have I responded to that? Right. Um, how How have I responded to those involved? And sometimes that's hard. Because, oh. first off, it's hard to sit still. Oh, yes. <laughs> right? When you have so much to do. Right. And then it's hard to reflect on yourself how you may have gone wrong. Oh, it's so easy to reflect on someone else. Oh, yeah. Isn't it? <laughs> and it's so easy to be the Holy Spirit for someone else. And I've to, never heard that phrase, but that is so And to true. pray for someone else's mm-hmm. discernment through the Spirit, for yeah. the Spirit to work in their lives. But it, this is so challenging. Mm-hmm. But piggybacking on last week... When we know God, yeah. we believe God, we trust God, we take our uncertainties to Him, mm-hmm. and we see, okay, He can handle all of my questions. He's trustworthy. Mm-hmm. Because let's face it, not everyone has an experience that is good with an earthly father. Mm-hmm. And hes it's hard to trust. Right. It is. But He is a good, good father. Mm-hmm. And even if He is going to, through His Spirit, reveal to us, yes, that was a sin. That was a moral failure. Mm-hmm. It is for our good. And he does it in a loving way, mm-hmm. so gently, so kindly, with so much grace and so much mercy. And he gives you what you need through his word to process it. Yeah. It's not like you're bad, you're a failure. Yes, you're right. That was sin. Suck it up, buttercup. Right. Figure out how to work with it. No, right. he's not that at all. We have to be willing to sit with him, willing to take it. And Kendra, I'll be honest with you, this is not something that I want to sit around and do. It was like sitting, calling, calling um, Sharon and saying, hey, let's talk about your failure. It's like calling up God and saying, hey, let's talk about my failure. Yeah. We don't want to do that. Right, it's uncomfortable. It's very messy. uncomfortable. Yeah. We don't want to hear the bad. We only want to feel and experience the good. Mm-hmm. But when we unearth these things, yeah. we can then move on. Right as you said earlier. So some questions that I, I've included in the book as well, but I wanted to pull out of the lesson mm-hmm. is, um, do, these are just practical questions, and, and I don't even remember what page they are in the book. I should have probably written that down. But just asking God to show me where I went wrong. Yeah. Just show it to me. I want to know. Yes, I really want to know. You may be saying that kind of like, yes, I really want to know, but please don't tell me. Yeah, right, exactly, exactly. (laughs) I really want to know, but yeah, (laughs) okay. Really mean it. Yeah. Really mean it. And it may, you just may have to, it may just be lip service at first. I I promise you it may be. And it's okay if it is. It's okay. He sees your heart. Mm -hmm. And if we just have to say it before we really mean it, it's okay. He gets all that. Those are our uncertainties Mm -hmm. that we can trust him with. Um, investigate that with asking God, you know, how did I go wrong? Um, how have I offended? What, what exactly did I do? Yeah. Cause I, there have been times where I've offended people, um, that I didn't realize it. I have kind of this sarcastic kind of tongue in cheek, um, sense of humor. Yeah. And I remember one time in Sunday school, that's what we call it. Not the, I know it's small group, shepherd groups, whatever, but we call it Sunday school at my church. Years ago, and um, we had, my husband and I had just gotten married, and I said something just to be funny. You know, sometimes you just 
I, I just like to, to try have to fun. Do exactly. <laughs> then, to yeah. lighten the load or to whatever, to try to be funny. I said something funny. And it, I remember the room kind of getting quiet. When we got in the car, yeah. my husband said, you really need to go and apologize to such and such and so and so. And I was like, why? <laughs> what I said was really funny. <laughs> and he said, well, you offended them. I yeah. said, I didn't mean it that way. Right. So that's the question is, we may not even realize right. that we have offended God or that we have offended mm. somebody. So just ask that question and just ex- and allow God to give you that honest answer. Um, ask God to test your motives. Mm-hmm. And, and, and what what is behind the decision yeah. that I make? Because this might be, failure might be a pattern. Mm-hmm. And there might be a pattern in a particular area of your life. So let's investigate that and check out what our motives are in that situation. And I love Psalm 139. I'm going to flip over there in my Bible. This is my go-to search me prayer because here's one of the things that I really want to equip when I teach is take in equipping, taking you to Scripture because there's no more powerful way to investigate ourselves right. than through the Word of God. That's good. And for those that might, like, where do I even start? What do I even say? Psalm 139, 23 and 24. Mm-hmm. David says this. Here's the words that you can pray to God, right? You don't even have to make up your own prayer. David's got it for us. <laughs> Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the everlasting way. If you want a challenge, look it up in the message translation. I'll okay. just leave that there because <laughs> it is really, really good, the message translation. Take deeper challenge. Absolutely. So when it comes down, just wrapping this up, when mm-hmm. it comes down to our to our failures, we have to let the Holy Spirit investigate. His jo- That's his job. Yeah. Everybody needs to do their job, and the Holy Spirit's job is to convict and to let us know, not condemn. And I think it's really important that we know condemn is going to make you feel bad. It's going to make you feel shame. I, I like shame, mm-hmm. and I like to think of it, when I feel condemned, I remember, you know, as a little girl getting in trouble, right? Yeah. I would hold my head down, like, and my, and my dog, when she's gotten in the trash, Maxie, you know, she's all <laughs> condemned. But the conviction of the Holy Spirit will lift us mm. because he is the lifter of our head, yeah. Scripture says. So think of it that way. A condemnation is going to make you look down and feel shame, as you said. Mm-hmm. It's going to make you feel bad. And that conviction that the Holy Spirit does will lift our heads toward God. Yeah who is going to sustain us and get us through that. So the Spirit's job is to convict. We confess, and then God uh, forgives us. And then we do need to reconcile with our brother or our sister. Mm -hmm. If if in that investigation we find we have offended another, we do need to reconcile with that because Scripture also tells us that we need to live at peace with everyone when at all possible. Right. Um, and there's a whole level that we can go, a different level we can go to that, but we need to make sure that we do our best to live in harmony with mm-hmm. other people. And you're going to see Moses' failure. Mm-hmm. He has a really big one. His failure, failure was a sin. Yeah. He murdered. He murdered someone, and he did it with full knowledge of what was going on yeah. because Scripture says that he looked this way and that way to make sure no one was seeing him. And then he hid it by wow. burying it. Then he ran to Midian. Mm-hmm. So we know that he had a huge failure in his life. And you can imagine only how in the world when he came upon that bush mm-hmm. that God was talking to him through, you, you can only imagine him thinking, how, how can God talk right, to like me? Right, he must have the wrong person. Exactly. Do you Does, know don't you past? know what I... Exactly. Right. Don't we have that same conversation with God? Yeah. Is how could you choose me? Don't you know my past? Right. But here's the thing. You are a worthwhile possibility. Yeah. You are a worthwhile possibility. We are worthwhile possibilities. And it doesn't matter what we've done in our past. Yeah. We work through those failures. We trust God. Mm-hmm. And we believe what he says about us, that we are faithful fearfully and wonderfully made and yeah. he has a plan for us that's great Ephesians 2 10 that was planned long ago with the foreknowledge of all the things that we were going to do wrong in our life right the plan was still great 
for us. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Wendy. I think you set up chapter two very well. I know failures is not something that mm. we're all very excited to read about, yeah, but I think you made me way. excited to read about it. Yeah, get the hard thing out of the way <laughs> right. and then we'll keep trucking with the other weeks. But thank you, Wendy, for setting that thank up. You. And everyone, as we go into week two, we're going to say it again because we believe when you know the truth, when you read God's word and then you live it out, it changes everything. So we hope you guys have a wonderful week. See you next week.